um, purchased the property. Uh, I went over and signed bond documents with the conveyancer. And then quite a number of months have elapsed, 12 months have elapsed since I signed. So in the contract, it stipulates that I could have a restructuring of the bond after a period of time has elapsed, which now has occurred. So the restructuring has happened and it appears as though the, the, what I, the previous amount that I signed at compared to what I'm going to sign at, I haven't yet signed, is far higher. I now want to look for a new service provider in terms of my bond. The conveyancer, however, is putting pressure on me to you know, sign at the new restructured bond value with the same service provider I signed at initially. Can I take time to go look for a new service provider in terms of obtaining a bond? And how long do I have before the sale is actually canceled? The answer is actually quite simple. It depends on the contract. I can't picture an offer to purchase that has a specific um, financial institution being the bond, uh, the the the, um, guy, the bank that provides the bond. Um, I can't see uh, that that could be enforceable because um, we we have like a, a, a free country where we can contract and trade as we see fit. Um, so unless the offer to purchase specifically said um, with this bank or with this service provider, if the contract does allow for restructuring, it's interesting and I would like to, to understand this scenario, but but that we won't go into, into all the detail there. But if you're allowed to, in terms of the contract, so it doesn't say you have a suspensive condition and fulfillment would require, obviously, to con continue with that bank, which I would expect to see in the average offer to purchase, um, that that you can't waste time and say, okay, my I have to get bond approval. It's a suspensive condition that I need to get bond approval within 21 uh, calendar days. But then you can move around and shop around after that. Once your suspensive condition has been filled, you have to uh, proceed in terms of the, uh, of the contract as is after fulfillment of your suspensive condition and failure to do that. Say, for instance, the purchaser did receive a bond with Bank A and now later on wants to delay the transaction by moving to another bank. Uh, the seller would have the right to, to enforce uh, specific performance and say, listen, buddy, suspensive condition was fulfilled. You can't now go shop around like a, uh, and, and move between service providers and delay the transfer. It would be a term of the average offer to purchase that um, all the parties have to do everything in their power to get to, the, uh, the, uh, to transfer as quickly as possible. So unless there's something weird, I can't really see that you can a, move around between banks after uh, the original bond approval was accepted by the purchaser. And at the same time, um, I can never see a situation where a seller can dictate um, uh, uh, the bank with which uh, the bond should be provided. Because they don't care. They get the cash. They don't care where the money comes from. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. So it's very unusual that they bind someone to a specific bank because it actually works against the seller because the seller wants uh, the purchaser to have as many options as possible. Uh, when when uh, Chris mentioned restructuring, though, just tell me, Chris, uh, so is this based on an offer to purchase or is this based on refinancing? I'm not actually sure what's the regard to the person who asked the question, you know. Um, so this is okay. me asking the question. The question yeah. does the question. Okay. No, the reason I say this is because from a refinancing perspective, just a quick one to throw it in there because I'm not sure. If you're already with a bank, you've already got a bond with the bank um, and now you're trying to restructure it and you're trying to sign for a higher amount or something along those lines, um, then it becomes difficult to change because now you're actually, it's basically a new credit application. So the banks uh, would, uh, the new bank would completely reassess you'd have to cancel the existing bond and go with a new bank. Mm -hmm. So from a refinancing perspective, uh, you would typically be stuck with your present service provider, uh, other, uh, your present uh, credit provider. Otherwise, it's actually going to cost you a lot more to change at that moment and to change bonds and get new registration and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's only if it's a refinancing, not a sale.